day, ladies and gents, and welcome to Lacuna Passage. Lacuna Passage is an early access survival game currently available on Steam, and it's one that I've had on my radar for quite some time. Since the moment I saw it, I started getting those vibes that I got when I first saw Subnautica back when it first entered early access, long before I ever actually put it on my channel. It is... well, it has an interesting concept behind it. The It has a full-blown story mode, which isn't currently available at this time, where you are a crash survivor and you're trying to find out exactly what happened. Why did your ship crash and what happened prior to you arriving on Mars while also being a survival game in order to survive on the Red Planet. You know, the Martian style. The sandbox, however, is available right now and that's what we're going to take a look at today. We're just going to do a raw playthrough, have a peek of exactly what is there. So, waking up in a landing pod, you must check your equipment and venture out onto the red Martian soil in search of a nearby habitat. With 20 plus square miles from the red planet to explore, you must gather resources from randomized points of interest, supply caches and other habitats to survive. Help us test the fundamentals of the game, game mode and yeah, da, da 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 you get the idea of what this is all about. Now, one of the interesting things about Lacuna Passage is the play area itself. While the small details on the surface are definitely left to the interpretation of the artists working on the game, the actual play area is taken from topography scans of the surface of Mars itself. The actual play area is a replication from an actual area on Mars, which unfortunately I don't remember the name of off the top of my head right now, but it is down in some of the details. I'll try and edit it into this video if I can. Anyways, let's go take a look. <sighs> And welcome to the inside of the escape pod. Now to look around, so it gives you a basic tutorial on the controls on intro, and sounds like we just landed. Welcome to Mars. Okay, now it's going to force us just to go through basic tutorial stuff here, but it's worth having a look. This is the data pad from which you do all of your management. Now, the UI seems to be a bit chunky. This is deliberate. The game is designed with the idea of VR in mind, but it's not currently VR supported. They're building the base game first, and then VR will come in later. You can see oxygen level top right hand corner, battery, we have to manage the power of our suit. Sol and time. The time is the current time on Mars in game, and souls is the number of years that we have actually been on the surface. So, we have vitals. Now, managing your character is going to be a little bit more complex than this than something like Subnautica. You have the nutrition level, so you've got a number of calories, traceable vitamins, and lipids. Hydration, electrolytes, blood cell count, and so on. Exhaustion, well-rested blood pressure and blood oxygen level, as well as radiation, body temperature, and even organ integrity. So, you have to manage yourself fairly detailed here. Navigation. So we have a map of the area that we can zoom around. Uh, inventory, that's pretty self-explanatory. What we've currently got on board, which will work with the crafting system. The weather, there is weather on Mars, so we have current wind direction, wind speed, and ambient temperature. Negative 26, it's actually pretty warm at the moment. Our photographs, taking photos and cataloging everything will be pretty important to the game. Nothing in there now, obviously. And documents. At the moment, it's only got our instructions on how to operate everything, but once you get into the main story, you will catalog all the records of everything you find will be in here. All right, so we'll exit out. Now, Q key to activate the scanner. So the scanner's put a box over our escape pod so we can see where that is at the moment. And we are looking there. The purple circle is the navigation to get to our habitat. And so we begin the walk. Now a lot of this is game is meant to make you feel lonely. You are supposed to be, or at least as far as we know, the only person alive on Mars. That's more over this way. Actually we can see the habitat in the distance from here, so that's cool. And the music works the same way. You get music at key moments as you're doing things throughout the game, but a lot of the time it's just going to leave you with your own thoughts as you wander around Mars and do what you have to do to survive, to explore and to find out what is going on. A nice cliff ridge line over here. The starting area is also completely random. There is no starting zone on the map. Everything is placed at random to begin with. So each time you start, the base will be the same, but the location will be different. 
and this will change the ranges to certain fixed points on the map that you'll have to deal with. So, habitat discovered and added to navigation. This is actually a really cool looking habitat, I want to build this on Kerbal. Alright, check the status of the habitat and life support systems via one of the consoles in the airlock. We can do that. Now we can run to go faster, but doing so you burn more calories and you use more oxygen quickly, so, uh, more quickly, so you have to decide when it's you really need to go faster, when you really just need to take your time. Alright, hab door. Alright, so either one of these consoles. Habitat settings. Habitat power is offline. Reserve power is at 66.4%. Airlock is depressurized. Interior temp is negative 2 and falling. So this place hasn't been shut down for that long. 5.4 litres of water, 90% but not collecting. Oxygen, 92.9 litres, 61% but not producing. Um, okay, cool. So we need to power up the systems that make this thing work. And these are around here. So, with a Reox generator, which one is this? This is heat. Well, no point in turning on the heat until we've got power. I reckon this one is electricity. Okay. Let's have a look at the diagnostics. Run diagnostics and see what is going on. Uh, fuses, solar panels are not all functioning, RTG is not functioning, and we are missing wires. Let's see if we can work out how to do this. Aha, uh -huh. maintenance panel. Uh, repair slot. 30 minutes, that took a bit of time. And can we repair that slot? Run diagnostics. Nope. That's not what we're after. Turn the power switch on, that probably help matters. Um, no, we don't have time to play around with that. Solar mount, have we got any spares? Replace component, yes we do. We have one solar panel on ourselves. Uh, we can install that. And no replacement, so we can't repair that one. Run diagnostics. Power switch is on. 130% local unit power. Component failures preventing operation. All right. Eight minutes. All these slots should be functional now. Ah, uh, no, we're straight up missing a wire, I think. Alright, what have we got here? Infantry, universal hose, wire, we have wire. Okay, so why is it not letting us replace? Um, where's the unit? No, it won't let us... It's not letting us replace the components. Which wire is the one that's busted? Run diagnostics. It is wire one. Okay, so see if we repair it. Run 
run diagnostics. Yes, we have it. Okay, electrical power is on. 100% you component failures preventing operation. The RTG maybe? Run diagnostics. RTG is at 98. Wires are good. <coughs> wires. We're not green on wires. Something's not right on the wires. Let's ease the wires. Just replace the component. Okay, that works. Module is operational. Okay, so. That got a little bit more complex since the last time we did it. Okay, so with power on, the next thing we're going to need is water. And this is the water unit. Okay. Run diagnostics. Uh, fuses are the issue here. So we cancel out. That should be simple enough to fix. Third slot down, replace component. We will install that fuse. Run diagnostics. Yes, we're good. And flip the switch. Water is now online. Okay, so next we want is oxygen. Now, you can't generate oxygen without water, which is why the water was more urgent. Diagnostics, and again, it's the fuses. Fuse one is dead, everything else is fine. So, repair the slot 30 minutes to repair the slot. Oh, it's getting dark. Replace component, install. Let's have a look here. Run diagnostics. Fuses is now good. So we cancel out. 54% on oxygen at the moment. So we're all good. Hit the power switch. Heater is the last part that we need to power up. And the lights have gone on. So we've definitely got power running in there. Alright, so let's see here. Run diagnostics. Heating equipment. We've got an issue with heating element 1 and fuse 2, but everything else is alright. Now it looks like heating elements are running anyway. So, cancel our way out. We just lost it there completely. Now, that is our light. Alright, so we've got a burnt out fuse. We've got to repair the slot. And we're going to replace that component for a start. And before we do anything here, maintenance panel B. These are the heating elements. Now, which one? Heating element one is completely burned out. I'm going to repair it. 30 minutes. And replace the component. Install. Double check diagnostics. Okay, so heating element is good. Heating element 2 is probably a bit rough. But we're all running. So at this point, I should be able to close these up. Hit the switch. Habitat Alpha is fully operational. Excellent. All right, time to go inside and get a breath of fresh air. As you can see, it's quite dark outside. Mars being completely uninhabited, it is... Yeah. They do a really good job with the ambience here, actually. Habitat door open. 
Let's go inside our habitat. All right. So welcome aboard Habitat Alpha, and we can have a little bit of a look around. So, uh, IRA, I-R-A, I think that's how it's pronounced, that is actually supposed to be the computer that you'll be dealing with a lot in the single-player storyline. We have materials for crafting. What have we got here? Chemical concentrate, we have some spare fuses, some scrap fabric, and some weak bonding agent. You will have to repair your own suits when they get damaged in the long term of the game. Equipment, what do we got spare? Just more fuses. Consumables. We have some coffee. That's important. The most important thing that I can put into any spaceship. Coffee. Grape jelly, macaroni, peanuts, water. Shortbread cookies and peas. So some packaged goods. Now you will be able to find more of these as you explore around. And you will eventually be able to, in the single player game, there will be a spot where you can actually try and grow your own food here. But it will not be easy. Habitat status. Habitat power is on, fully operational. Reserve power. Reserve power is at 66.3 and not meeting power demands. Well, it's night time, so that's not surprising. Airlock is pressurized. Interior temp is coming up. Heater is on reserve power. Again, not surprising, it's night time. Um, I'd be worried if it says not meeting power demands when the sun is up. Water. Water reclamator fully operational, 90%. It's collecting oxygen. Producing from water reclamator. Reoxygenator on reserve power. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because it's night time and we're only running on solar power at this point. So we do have a sleeping bunk, so you can sleep your way through a section of the game. So you don't have to uh, burn calories if you don't want to. Should probably actually have a look at that. How am I going at this point? Vitals. Below normal trace vitamins, 220 calories. Normal blood oxygen, normal blood pressure. Still well rested. Below normal electrolytes, above normal blood cell count. Getting tired, I'm a little thirsty. And over here... You have the salvaging area where you can salvage dead items. So you got a carbon filter and a heating element. These are functional as far as I can tell. So we shouldn't have to worry about salvaging those. I think I'll keep those for the moment until I find out what we need. And then out of the spare components that you have, you can craft additional materials. So we have you know, whatever else we need, you build and put together a plan and work out how to make stuff. You obviously have to discover the plans over time, learn them, and then use whatever materials you find to build, you know, replacement carbon filters, replacement heating elements to, in order to be able to survive for an extended period of time. The fact that the time here is measured in souls tells you exactly how long they expect you to survive on the surface of Mars. I can see there being quite the challenge to see how long people will actually be able to keep themselves going for. So, at this point, I'm not going to eat or drink just yet. We are going to hit the sack until morning. So I want to sleep. Yeah, I'm going to sleep till 5, because I want to be up early enough to actually see the sunrise. Alright, so first thing we want... No, not equipment. Consumables. Uh, let's have some... We'll take... Three water. Now we should be able to go through to inventory and we should be able to consume those. Have some peanuts while we're at it and we'll drink a little bit of water. We'll drink three. Now the game's not going to immediately give us increases to our vitals, I don't think. Oh no, I take it back, it will. So, vitals are now good. At this point, we're going to go for another little bit of a wander outside. Now, we have to prep our suit. Now, we've got to manage our suit between our current power 
and our current oxygen. So I want to transfer all oxygen so we're nice and loaded up and I want to charge up our battery and commence EVA. So we have to manage, going into the suit doesn't immediately give you a full load of supplies that you can survive on. You must take supplies from the habitat if you wish to actually be able to survive out here. We turn off all lights, and it looks like we miss sunrise, which is unfortunate. The sunrise here is actually really pretty. Oh, no, not quite. We got a little bit. The sun is modelled to be at the correct distance from where we are. So, places to go next. We have our red triangle, so this is the direction we're going to now head in. Now, at the moment, we don't have nav systems online. Basically, we don't have a GPS relay operating. There's none here. That triangle, however, should be one. It's going to be quite the walk to get there. I do like the way the music kicks in when you're sort of exploring around. It is rather nice. Very relaxing game. Considering how stressful it is when you start running out of supplies. Now in the long term, I think you're going to be able to recover vehicles to be able to traverse larger and larger stretches of the terrain to get around faster. But again, those vehicles will require power. They will require maintenance. You'll need to find spares from wherever you happen to be able to find them. And so if we look over in the distance, we can just see our destination. There's a small tower. Looks like we're about uh, a bit over a kilometer out. Now, as we're exploring through, it's important to keep the scanner up to have a look around. The scanner can detect large items that it knows. Basically, at this point, it gives you the locations of you know, nearby major locations that you'll need to visit. But as you're exploring around, the scanner will pick up smaller stuff as you get closer to it. So you'll find lost probes, you'll find uh, ejected seats, you'll find cargo crates that may have come down in the crash or have been left for some reason you'll find recovered and salvageable components that you'll be able to collect and bring back in order to continue your survival. Nothing here at the moment though. Alright, so way set discovered and added to navigation. This is good, this should activate navigation. 82% oxygen load. And we're getting achievements here at the moment. I've actually done all of this once before, but there were no achievements in the game the last time I actually played through. So, now we can have a look and see what we've got to do to make this thing run. Run diagnostics. Circuit board is good. Fuses are not. So, we have spare fuses. Uh, replace component, we only have one. I hope it doesn't need any more than that. Maybe I should have grabbed the spares after all. Run diagnostics, we're good. 91% on that fuse, but we're all going to be running on one. Turn on the power. And navigation is now online. So, with navigation online, we should be able to load up the map to the surrounding areas. Send it on location, and we should be able to take a look. Right, so at the moment we're not getting anything in this region, but at least it's giving us some idea of what's going on. Right, we'll do a scan from this point, see if we can see anything. So that's the escape pod. That is the habitat, and at the moment we don't have a great deal of anything. We're down to 77% oxygen. 
It's 11.05, so we've killed a little bit of time here. We've still got plenty of daylight to get back. Alright, so we'll begin making our way back to the habitat at this point, and hopefully we'll be able to find something along the way for the next place to go. If not, once we've charged up the suits, we'll be able to consider exploring in a completely different direction and see whether or not we can find another one of the navigational beacons. If we can find more, I believe they talk to one another, and as you unlock more, they get to start triangulating locations within the map and start showing you more of the major locations. There are other habitats floating around. I've found one in one previous playthrough. I don't know where the new ones would be, though. We're not getting much else around here, unfortunately. <clears throat> Wait. That is our escape pod. That is not. That didn't pop up the last time I scanned through here, so the nav beacon is starting to increase our range of detecting stuff. That could be a supply cache, it could be a crash drone, but with only 62% oxygen and already past 12 o'clock, we probably don't want to make that walk just yet. As you saw, it gets really dark, and if you get caught out here after dark, Finding your way back can actually be quite the nightmare. Plus the fact that because you've got to run the torches to simply be able to see where you're going, you're consuming power and oxygen on the way back. So anyways, ladies and gents, this is Lacuna Passage in Early Access. Just a quick brief look around at the start. I may put a couple more videos up on this of me exploring around the current sandbox as it is to see exactly what we can find. This... I really like the look of this. I like the idea of survival games that have something. There is something beyond just running around. Subnautica's got a good storyline to it that is in development, and there is definitely something more than just the survival that makes it appealing, and I think this is going to go the same way. Anyway, until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, I'll catch you next time.